Hello and welcome to Halcyon Blink. My name is Vaughn Riser and I'm going to be your host for this episode. And on this edition, I want to talk about Enter the Matrix. What do I want to talk about Enter the Matrix? Well, Enter the Matrix gets a bad rap these days uh, for being glitchy, for being buggy, for being washed out, for being uh, poorly conceived, uh, all this, that, the other. Here's my take. Add the cheats in, it suddenly becomes a very, very fun game. Um, the idea behind Enter the Matrix is that at the height of the popularity of the Matrix series between uh, the first movie and the second movie, and at around the time of the release of the second movie, they thought it would capitalise by expanding the universe to a certain degree. So you had Enter the Animatrix, uh, you had this game, I believe there was some kind of comic book franchise that was launched alongside it. But as far as the game is concerned, it was an attempt to try and shed light onto subsidiary characters that appear in the movie but don't really get a lot of time to shine, Ghost and Niobe. Um, I like the game, I like the concept behind it because it allowed you the ability to capitalise on the two things we really loved about the Matrix movies, slow-mo kung fu, bullet time, and I suppose the third thing, copious amounts of unlimited amounts of guns. It's a good concept. I will argue that it is. I will concede that maybe the execution wasn't great. Some of the graphics are muddy as hell, and some of the animations can look fake as fuck, but you also have to consider the technology of the time. If it were to be made today, I would be severely disappointed by this kind of graphics and motion capture, but it, it was what it was. It was, for a promotional tool, as far as promotional tools go, this is one of the better ones. You, ha you, can't, you have to concede that. You have certain actions like you can run on walls, you can spin in midair, you can jump long distances, you can go into bullet time, you can use different guns and store different guns, you can fire them by simultaneously, you can do kung fu moves, you even have the interaction with the agents being what they are, which are they're basically unbeatable, unless of course you go into bullet time, in which case you do have somewhat of a chance to fend them off, you can't kill them. You certainly can't shoot them, but you can uh, you can fend them off to a certain degree, or at least counter some of their attacks in order to disable them for a moment or two. Um, the the running mechanics, though, are the things that disappoint me most about this game. And a lot of this game does concern running from place to place, especially again when you're running from agents or trying to get from place to place in a time trial mode. The driving, which also forms some of this game, not a tremendous amount, but some, reminds me of the Die Hard trilogy in terms of how bland the environments look, how unfinished it looks, and how bad the mechanics. Are. I always felt like the world ceased to exist when I was driving in these games and it, it, the shooting mechanics from the driving side of the game as well because sometimes you, you're, you're in the passenger seat shooting and other times you're in the driver's seat driving it just again it felt like an over underwhelming experience but the story itself is pretty cool the fact that it, it directly links to the movie and the fact that they put in the effort to write it that way I appreciate the fact that they filmed a whole bunch of cutscenes and gave them context and had interactions from other characters from within the movie. Again, I appreciate that. And the graphics, yes, don't look amazing now, but at the time they were serviceable. So I'll give it a pass as far as that's concerned. In terms of a recommendation, I would recommend this game for people, again, looking to go back and experience an old school PlayStation 2 game that maybe didn't get their, uh, get their kicks from something like a Tekken or a fighting game or something along those lines. Wanted something more action-based, but wanted something Kung Fu-based. I think a lot of first-person shooters specifically third-person shooters, don't really have much of a hand-to-hand -hand element these days. It's usually just a click on one of your uh, on your right analog stick. Whereas Enter the, Mat and, uh, Enter the Matrix tried to at least give you some semblance of two, the gunplay, which was probably weaker than most because you couldn't physically aim down sights, it was more of an auto-aim sort of deal, um, which again can ruin it sometimes, but what are you going to do? And then also you've got the hand-to-hand -hand mechanics, which I thought were fun. So if I'm going to grade this game, it's a 6 out of 10, I'm handing out a lot of these, just 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, but it wasn't terrible and it has its problems, but at the same time I remember booting up every time and having a blast just being able to do the things that you can do in the Matrix. It was a great form of wish fulfillment and a great fantasy role playing experience for those of us who were blown away by how cool the Matrix films used to look. So if I'd recommend this to anybody, I said go back with the idea that you can use hand-to-hand -hand combat to disarm people and kill people and knock people out and also then transition into slow-mo, running up walls and shooting guns. It's pretty cool. 
so long as you can avoid its pitfalls. So thanks very much for watching this episode of Halcyon Blink. Please like, share, subscribe, check out some of the other content creators in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, and as always, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Halcyon Blink.